Thanks for joining us again in God's Limitless Outdoors. In last week's episode, we were all covered up in elk, but got distracted by a big muley buck before we could seal the deal. In this week's episode, we're back at it the next day and chasing a bull that we had glassed the morning before. Elk country is tough country. There's no way around it. If you're hunting elk, you're hunting in steep and deep country. You're hunting in country that is forged by fire and flood. You're hunting in country that few men really ever step into because honestly, there are very few men in the world. It requires something extra out of you. You know, there's a lot of different things that you can hunt, a lot of different places to hunt, and you can even hunt elk in a high fence. But what I'm talking about is hunting elk where you wouldn't take your kids walking. I'm talking about hunting elk in some of the gnarliest creation that God has crafted as far back as you could possibly go and farther than you think that you could possibly pack them. So I hope you enjoy this episode as we go steep and deep after a big bull in God's backcountry. It's uh, morning two, I guess now. Killed a good mule deer buck yesterday up here in the high country. And we we're here at our camp and we spotted a big bull right up here. I'm in offline mode right now, so you can see I got just extreme detail. But we saw these bulls, they were feeding this, it's called Ceanothus, we call it rhododendron too. It's probably not the right name, but they're feeding out in here. And so I dropped a little point here. And so that's the point where we're at we're gonna come through here along that trail and then side hill up through that ridge and these openings and I think we'll be able to either kill him from right here or walk in on top of him and shoot him or shoot him from over here I don't know he's probably gonna die as our last animal deer hiking for probably about an hour and 15 minutes or more and the sun's just coming up it's shooting light now we can see everything and we're right at our little glassing spot here so we're gonna wrap over this ridge set up and hopefully we find Solomon pulled off of all of his wives by himself laying up there eating it's gonna be a good morning I can feel it beautiful does not get any better This country was just absolutely premium. Before we could even get to our glassing knob, we were running into elk. And before the day was over, we would see over 140 elk. We got to our glassing knob and immediately spotted up these two bulls sparring with each other up on the hillside. I got two bulls right here. Oh yeah, you do got to run. They are. So this is gonna be a gnarly pack. We are right here at first light. It's just getting light. And uh, oh, it's a good sight to see these bulls fighting like this. We're gonna work our way up in there. And I think we're gonna shoot him at like 300 yards or less. <laughs> oh, is the record button gonna be on? Training to beat Solomon next year. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be Solomon next year. No, I am. We are struggling our way up in here. And these bulls, they didn't bed down 
quite where we hoped they would. So now we gotta go farther up the drainage, deeper. And there's a reason there's nobody in here. That's nasty. I can't hardly fathom what it is we're about to do. I really wish my brother was here with me right now. Because when we were down in Colorado, he said, your passion has to outweigh the pain. And I look back at these elk and they're still way up here. We've been hiking for hours now, side hilling. And they're bedded down around the corner here. And there's gonna be a lot of pain and anguish packing this thing out. And barring some substantial hunter error here, I think we're probably gonna kill an elk. And it just shows you how madly in love we are with this here lifestyle. Because that's what this is, is a lifestyle. If you don't appreciate the process and everything that goes into killing elk, you'll just sit down and camp and maybe kill one every couple of years. But this here's a process and there's lots of pain and lots of joy and all sorts in it. It's fun and exciting and exhilarating and we really live for it. And we're just in some gorgeous country, just, just soaking it all in. But it's gonna be some rough days ahead of us. This will be in a good vantage point for glassing in the morning. Down, rolling. He's up. Is he stepping on? He's down. Oh my goodness. We got him. 352 yards. Yeah, that was a. Oh, what have we done? 
Oh my goodness, we're good. It was right there the whole time, man. Just couldn't, just couldn't, couldn't see him. We did it. I just thought he might get up and walk around after, in the afternoon a little bit. What did I tell you? I said we were going to kill him at 1.30 or 4.30. Yeah. What is it, 12? Yeah, it's somewhere around there. But they always get up, everything always gets up around me. Hey. Oh my gosh. Where's the other bull? Or is this a bull that we've never seen before? Could be. This, this here was a solid six. I know. He looked good, huh? Sweet, man. <laughs> <sighs> Well, we got in here about two days ago, and uh, immediately we just saw a bunch of elk. And this has just been an unbelievable trip. Killed a great mule deer yesterday, but this here, this is going to be one that we remember forever. I think this is going to be the most savage pack out of our lives because we put a seven and a half hour stock on this bull this morning. Seven and a half hours before we killed him, and we walked not the whole time, but pretty darn close to the whole time. And just absolutely amazing hard work and perseverance. Ah. But Shane and I were just talking and one of the things that when we came to the Lord, when we decided to start following Jesus, we started looking around and all these Christian men were weak and they were just wimps. And to be honest with you, that's always been kind of my perception of Christian people. And I think if you just look across America right now, I think that's not, I don't mean this in a mean spirit, but I don't think that is very far off that most Christians are really weak. But when you read God's word about God's men, there's David and his mighty men. And, and man, I think uh, guys like Elisha, who was a prophet, and the dude, he wore out 12 yoke of oxen working every day, plowing fields. I mean, he was a hard working, tough dude. And you look at man after man, Joshua stepped on 31 kings necks and slayed them. I mean, these guys were like, they were savage and tough. And so I just want to encourage anybody watching today, not all Christians are weak. In fact, to be a Christian is to have the power of God in you. And if you have the power of God, you are, my goodness, you should be the farthest thing from weak. You know, Jesus says, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And I always used to think that meek meant weak, but meek means just strength under control. And just as we pound through this brush and just miles and miles of packing and everything, there's just strength under control. <laughs> If you're steering away from Jesus because you're looking at Christians and you're like, man, they're a mess and they're hypocrites and they're weak and feeble, I would just tell you just to turn your eyes away from them because there are strong Christians, there are mighty men. And the reality is, is it doesn't matter what they're doing. It matters between you and the Lord. The fact is, that's all that matters at the end of the day. But being a Christian, you should not be weak. There was this man in 2 Samuel, one of my favorites. And all of Israel ran away from the Philistines. They were all so scared. And he looked at them and he knew who he was and he knew who his God was. And he picked up the sword. His name was Eleazar. He picked up the sword and he fought the Philistines all day long until he killed all of them by himself. Him and David and a couple of other guys. Like three, four guys tops. They wiped out a whole army. And it said at the end of the day, 
The sword was stuck in his hand. And you should imagine how bloody of a mess that guy was and how savage that was. Man, Christians should be tough. So don't walk away from Christ because Christians are weak. Because not all Christians are weak. They should be tough. want to take a second and thank you for watching this video and I truly hope that you enjoyed it and if you did enjoy it and you haven't subscribed to our channel yet make sure to subscribe to our channel and click for the notifications to be turned on as well so you can stay up to date with everything that we have going on here at Limitless Outdoors. I just want to remind you it doesn't matter what you have done it matters what you do now. You can put your faith in Jesus Christ and receive eternal life from him no matter who you are no matter what you've done. God bless you all and have a wonderful day.